today is how to get involved in the trades and also why it is a viable alternative to, to going to university and doing a lot of, uh, a lot of schooling that's going to cost you lots of money. Okay, so let's get the presentation started then. So we have an organization called Apprenticeship Manitoba and it is responsible for uh, regulating or looking after the, the regulated trades here in Manitoba. Do you want respect, opportunity, good pay? Now, in your own countries, would this describe a trade? No. No. So, are you telling me that tradespeople in your country don't get these three things? No. What, ab what about the good pay? Let let's stick with this one. What do they? What do they get paid in your your country? Like. Like it's a low wage, it's a minimum wage. Okay. Would it surprise you to know that here in Canada, tradespeople earn really, really good money? Okay. Uh, they can earn professional level salaries and depending on the, the trade, beyond professional level salaries. Okay. So it is a really good area to get into. Okay. So. In order to decide whether a trade is for you, uh, I'd like you to answer these three questions, oh sorry, five questions for yourself. Working with, do you enjoy working with your hands and putting things together? Yes. Yeah? Yeah? Uh, do you enjoy understanding how things work? Yes. Yeah? Do you enjoy being physically active? Yes. yes. Do you enjoy learning by doing? Yes. yes? And do you enjoy working with new technologies? Yes. I'm going to add one more question to that. Do you like getting your hands dirty? Yes. Okay. Then maybe you will enjoy doing a trade. Okay. So hopefully after this presentation, some of you may really consider going into apprenticeship. So. Let's talk about the different trades that have an effect on our daily lives, okay? Your house. Your house was built by all of these tradespeople. We've got electricians, carpenters, bricklayers, plasterers, plumbers, power line technicians, insulators, painters, decorators, gas fitters, and floor covering and installers. All of these people built your home. Okay, if you live in an apartment building, same thing. Okay, all of these trades are involved in building one home. Okay, next, your vehicle. So your car, all of these people were involved in building your car. Okay, can you think of another aspect of your life that is, that is affected by the trades? Clothing and shoes, not really, uh, yeah. not machine. really. Yeah. Ah, the uh, machines yeah. that, that make your clothing, yes, okay. Blanket. Your appliances, yes, they're built by tradespeople. Anything else? I heard something over here. Your transportation, your, so the buses, who takes transit? Yes, okay. What about when you, when you go out for dinner? Do you like going out for dinner? I like going out for dinner. <laughs> okay, so the person who is preparing your food in the restaurant, they're a tradesperson, okay. Uh, ladies, do you go to a hairstylist to get your hair done? Yes, they're a tradesperson, okay. Uh, do you also get your nails done and maybe get a facial or a massage? Yes? Okay. Those are tradespeople. Okay. So it affects every aspect of your life, which is why they are highly valued workers here. Okay. So we're going to move on to the fact that they are in demand. 
okay? 48% of Canada's population will retire in the next five to 10 years. They will be reaching retirement age. Many of that 48% are tradespeople. So they need to be replaced before they retire because it takes a few years to learn a trade, right? Uh, one million skilled workers needed by 2020 and in the manufacturing sector, 400,000 skilled workers are needed just in that one sector, okay? So you can see that this is an area that is wide open. This is an area where you, know, you could get a job and you could get well paid, okay? So, so I'm gonna hand you off to Melissa uh, and I'll see you in a minute. <laughs> So we're going to talk a little bit about why the skilled trades can be a career for you. And it's not just a job. And like Liz had mentioned earlier, she asked about the skilled trades in your country and how maybe the perception of the trades in your home country might be different than it is here. Uh, in Canada, many people who work in the trades are highly valued. As you can see, they are involved in many aspects of our life as well. And there are some misconceptions or myths that many people, even today, still think about the trades. But we're going to try to break some of those misconceptions and myths. We're going to go through four examples with you and explain to you how uh, skilled trades can be something which is uh, valuable to you, a potential career opportunity for you, uh, and not the same as what maybe people have considered in the past. So the first myth is that some people think skilled trades are not for students that get good grades. So in other words, if you are a very good student, you get very high marks, I think it's better that you go to university and study a profession. Many people think this. Do you think it's true? It's a myth. It is not true. Myth means misconception. In fact, if you want to do skilled trades, you also need to have very high intelligence. You need to be able to use your math skills and some technology skills. You need to have strong foundation in reading and writing, math and sciences like you see here. So people who work in the trades are also very intelligent and they also have very good uh, uh, grades, I guess we can say, and they know how to do the same things that people in professions do. So that's one of the myths about the skilled trades. Uh, you do, in fact, have to be a good student and a hard worker to be in the skilled trades. The second myth, uh, university is the only path to a good career. Uh, many people still think this today. So when um, your child is in high school, they're getting ready for graduation, and your child says to you, uh, I'm going to go to university. The parents, yeah, great, that's wonderful. You will have a good job. And if the child says, you know, I think I want to go into the trades, the skilled trades, the parents, maybe, if, if they're thinking like this, the parents might go, oh, you won't make very much money. It's not a good job. You have to go to university. Is this true? It's not true. It's a myth. And like Liz mentioned, in fact, the skilled trades are one of the uh, areas right now which are paying the best. Uh, so in fact, to have a good career, if you consider a good career to be about money and value to society, uh, in fact, skilled trades are a good option as well. The next myth. All skilled trades are dirty, noisy, and physically demanding. So Liz had asked you if you wanted to get your hands dirty, and that's true. There are some aspects of the skilled trades which might be a little dirty. But there is a misconception or a myth that everything about the trades is dirty and noisy and uh, I don't want to do it. Right? But in fact, there are a lot of trades which are highly technology based. I'll give you an example. Uh, my father is a mechanic and many years ago mechanics was quite dirty, quite noisy. You would lift up the hood of the car and you would dig around in the car to find the problem. Nowadays what happens is the car comes into the shop, the car gets plugged into a computer and the computer tells the mechanic what is wrong with the car. 
hands clean for a little bit until they have to fix the car. <laughs> then they might be a little bit dirty after. But this is one of those myths that the job is not going to be all dirty and noising and demanding. There will be some aspects, yes, but a lot of it is going to be just the same as other types of careers. And finally, the last myth, number four. Women do not have the strength to perform skilled trades. Do you agree with this statement? No. no. All of the women out there should say, no. <laughs> we don't agree, OK? Because uh, many years ago, there were not a lot of women in the trades because they thought like this. Because people thought, you're a woman, you can't do it. It's, you, you need more strength. It, skilled trades are not for you. It's only for men who are very strong and able to do it. But that's not true. This is a myth. And right now, there are uh, lots of women that are entering trades which were not traditionally women's trades. For example, uh, welders. You mentioned welders as a trade, skilled trades. There's lots of women uh, from Manitoba who are in welding. Uh, mechanics as well. Uh, other types of jobs which might not be a traditional choice for women. So if you, any of the women out here today, if you find something in our presentation today that interests you, don't think like this. Don't think that I can't do it because I'm a woman. You can do it. Women and men can do the same thing. You can choose any trade that you are interested in. Okay, so those are some of the myths about skilled trades uh, not being a good career. But in reality, they are a good career option. We're going to move on a little bit into what is apprenticeship. Uh, and that's the main focus of our presentation today. When you graduate from high school, or as newcomers, when you come here and you're looking for a career choice, you have three options. Here in Canada, we have university, we have college, but we also have apprenticeship. This is the third option, apprenticeship. And what is apprenticeship? We will talk about that today. The benefits to apprenticeship, in a moment Liz will be explaining more about uh, exactly what is apprenticeship, but the benefits to it, just to get your mind going and your excitement, uh, you can earn as you learn on the job. So one aspect of apprenticeship is that you're making money as you're learning. In university and college, that's not the same. You're attending in-school learning, which is highly subsidized. Subsidized means that you're getting money back for what you're putting in. No waiting lists. I'm sure some of you have already contacted some universities and colleges and they've told you, uh, yeah, you can sign up, but it will be two years before you begin, or three years, or more. And you have to wait in that time to get into the classes. But with apprenticeship, there's no waiting. You can start any time. And apprenticeships create demand. The future is in your hands. There is no ceiling for you. The future is open, and with apprenticeship, you have so many opportunities. And as we were talking earlier, money. Everyone likes to talk about money. <laughs> the skilled trades uh, do have great pay, in fact. Uh, and as Liz was mentioning, uh, many people in the trades, they earn more money than maybe what you are familiar with or what you're used to. As you can see, one of the statistics here is that tradespeople earn salaries that are approximately 3% above the average of all other careers in Canada. Does that surprise you? It's a little bit shocking, I think, because again, in your countries, you mentioned a lot of the tradespeople are, are making low wages. It's not something which is a high paying job. But here in Canada, it's different. It is a very high paying job. You can earn excellent salaries depending on the trade, so depending on which one you choose, but also on the location. Uh, if you like to travel and you want to do some work in the north of Canada, you will make a lot of money because there are not so many people that want to go up north. But if you would like to travel and visit the polar bears, <laughs> you can make a lot of money. <laughs> okay? Plus you get to hang out with polar bears, that's cool. And finally, uh, apprentices who become journey persons, we'll explain what that means later. Uh, you can have your own opportunity to have a business. You can start your own business and you can start hiring other people to work for you. 
So that's something which maybe is not the same uh, when you go to places like university or college. So Liz and I always love to talk about apprenticeship. In fact, Liz and I joke sometimes that if we quit our jobs here at Entry, maybe we would start or consider <laughs> apprenticeship because it is really a very interesting field to get into right now. Uh, and there's lots of possibilities, lots of options, uh, something for everyone. So we're going to give you a little bit more information today, hopefully make you just as excited about it as we are. I think the next one is Liz. Let's talk about what apprenticeship is, okay? It's a high quality education. You get on the job training as well as in class training, okay? It's usually about uh, an 80 to 20 uh, ratio, okay? So 80% of your training will be on the job. You will be mentored by a professional journey person. Do you know what a journey person is? Tell me, what's a journey person? Yes, because they are already certified in their trade, right? So it's a person who will teach you uh, how to do this trade because they are already certified. So they will be your mentor, okay? And so you will go through apprenticeship and you will be trained 80% of the time on the job, okay? 20% of the time you will be in actual classes. You will go to school at you know, Red River College or somewhere else to do the theory of your trade, okay? So let's talk about what's different between your, your regular education, your college or university, and apprenticeship. So with apprenticeship, you will submit an application to become an apprentice to Apprenticeship Manitoba, okay? And if you are uh, accepted, which you will be, <laughs> uh, you will spend 40 to 44 weeks of the year on the job training. You will be learning your trade from square one, okay? Which means that you do not have to have any experience in a trade to begin doing a trade. They're going to start you right at square one. Uh, you will be mentor mentored by a journey person, as I said, and you will earn a salary from the very first day you start your trade. So that 80% of work that you are doing in your trade, on the job, you're getting paid for it. Whereas in university college, you may have been accumulating debt, right? So there's a difference right there. Instead of accumulating debt, you're getting paid. An apprenticeship, oh sorry, uh, yeah, an apprenticeship takes two to five years to complete. Basically the same as college or university, right? If you're going to college, most college programs are two years. Uh, university, depending on how far you go, if you do a bachelor and then you do a master's and then you do a PhD, uh, you're spending a lot of your time in school. <laughs> many, many years, okay? To do your average bachelor degree, it takes three years. If you, uh, well, a, ge a general a general bachelor is about three years. If you're doing an honors year, then you do four, right? And so, it's it's really not going to take any more of your time, but you're going to be getting paid for that three or four years that you're doing your trade, rather than accumulating debt. Um, you will you will receive a certificate of uh, qualification after your trade, okay? So as it, mo most trades are on average between three and four years. So when you complete your apprenticeship, you will do uh, a test, you'll do an exam. And when you pass the exam, you will get a certificate of trades qualification, okay? So remember I said that that 20% of your time that you're going to be spending in class. Uh, so Apprenticeship Manitoba contracts out these, these uh, classes to these different locations, okay? So you, maybe you're doing a trade here in Winnipeg, but because of the trade that it is where it's contracted out, when you do your 20% of schooling, you may be going to 
Brandon. You may go to Assiniboine Community College in Brandon to do your 20% of schooling. Okay? Uh, and then as soon as you're done that, you come back to Winnipeg and you start again doing your 40 to 44 weeks uh, of on-the-job training. Okay? Many trades are Red Seal trades. And what that means is consistency. Okay? Uh, if you do a Red Seal trade, after you do your examination for your trade designation, you will do a Red Seal examination as well. If you get a Red Seal, what that means is that you can work anywhere in Canada doing your trade without ever having to do another exam, okay? Which is different than the other professions. I mean, as a, as a teacher, uh, we teach in Manitoba, but if we go to another province, we have to do examinations, okay, for that province. Uh, what other things? Uh, lawyers mm -hmm. have to do it. Pretty much all of the professions. You go to province to province to province, you have to do different exams. With the trades, you get a Red Seal trade, you never have to do that again. <laughs> you can work anywhere in the country, okay? And, and Red Seal trades are being recognized nat nationally as well as internationally. So the U.S., uh, I think that Jeff uh, had European said... Uh, there's some European countries. Euro yes, there's some European countries that are, are taking up the Red Seal as well. Because what Red Seal means is consistency, okay? If you did your training in, say, Newfoundland, in a Red Seal trade, the reason that you can now work in Alberta is because the person that did that trade in Alberta got the exact same training. Okay? So that's what the Red Seal means, is consistency right across the country. An employer doesn't have to worry about what you know whether you can do the job if you're in a red seal because they know exactly what you know. Okay? And I'm going to hand it over to Melissa again. We're going to talk about some of the categories or the sectors of trades. Uh, in Manitoba, there are four different sectors. And what we mean by sectors is how we categorize the trades um, in, in different ways. So, for example, we have the construction trade, we have transportation, I think someone had mentioned that earlier as a trade, industrial, and service. And within these sectors, there are over 50 different trades. Some sectors are larger than others or have more trades than others, but we'll talk a little bit about some examples of trades in each one of these sectors. And maybe you'll find something you're interested in as we go through each one. So the first is construction trades. I know the printing is a little small, but I hope you can see some of these examples. Uh, I won't go over all of them, but as your eyes are glancing at them, maybe you will find something that intrigues you, something that is interesting to you. I'll just read a few examples. So in the construction trades, things like carpenter, uh, roofer, painter and decorator, plumber, these are some of the construction trades. And you can see many, many other examples as well. I'll just give you a minute to take a look at some of these options. Maybe something will interest you. The second type of uh, sector is called the transportation trades. And again, you can see here that all of these are related to different forms of transportation. We have agricultural related uh, trades, so uh, to do with tractors and other types of farm equipment. We have automotive, or we can consider that vehicle uh, trades, things like painting and mechanics. You can also see aircraft, so working with airplanes. Some of you might be interested in that. Uh, and also the railway, so trains. We also have railway trades. So again, many different examples related to transportation. The third sector is industrial. And so these are the types of jobs that might be considered those um, heavy and dirty jobs, but again, technology is involved. So we have things like uh, an electrician, industrial electrician, or a welder, 
or a tool and die maker. Uh, rig technician is a new trade which has been developed in Manitoba and that is related to uh, oil, oil rigs. And uh, most of the time people think of Alberta when they think of rig technicians. But there is a place in Manitoba which is also doing this. It's in Verdon. This is in the west part of Manitoba. So you can also be trained in this here in our province. Uh, one thing I should mention, uh, you might see here where it says Manitoba Hydro beside the power electrician. And the reason for that is because here in Manitoba, anybody who works in this trade, in the power electrician trade, works only with Manitoba Hydro. Manitoba Hydro is the organization which helps uh, and employs power electricians. And finally, we have the service sector or the service trades and there's not too many in this sector but maybe some of you are interested in these things so cook esthetician electro electrologist <laughs> I can never say that word electrologist removing there we go. a body hair Rem oh yes yes no I know what it is <laughs> okay I just have a hard time pronouncing it maybe because I'm afraid of it <laughs> um hairstylist as well uh, parts person. Uh, parts person is the trade which uh, this person would be trained to know all of the different parts needed for different types of machines and vehicles and how to put things together. They would also sell the parts and maintain and uh, maintain the parts and make sure they're in good working order. Uh, pork production technician. Hmm. What is pork? Pig. So in Manitoba, we have a lot of uh, hog barns, they're called, but uh, people who work with pigs. And uh, we think of farmers when we think of that. But in fact, there are trades like this that uh, are needed to help the farmers. And we call them pork production technicians. So they work in the hog barns. They work with the pigs, with the animals. And um, that is something which is a very common trade here in Manitoba. Is that the last slide? Or one more? Okay, so Liz is going to come back and, oh, sorry, it's cut off a little bit. She's going to tell you a little bit about some of the requirements for uh, apprenticeship. Okay, so uh, is anybody currently thinking about apprenticeship now? Yes. Yeah, you're thinking it might be an option? Yes? Okay, good. Uh, to get involved with apprenticeship, uh, your qualifications are minimal. You, you don't need to have a university degree or a college diploma to get involved in apprenticeship. In fact, all you need is your grade 12, okay? Now, I know that in some countries, high school doesn't go to grade 12, right? I think most people, uh, Philippines, for example, uh, it only, your high school only goes to grade 10, right? How many of you have gone on to college or university after that? Yes? You qualify. Okay, so if you've done your, your high school, you got your grade 10, and then you went on to more education, you qualify. Okay, even though you don't have a grade 12 per se. Okay. Um, your, your, your courses needed to include English, math, science, and computer skills. You have to have good computer skills. Okay, if you don't have those things, then maybe you need to upgrade a little bit because you need to have math, science, computer skills, and English. Now, English, I don't think anybody's first language here is English except for mine and Melissa's, right? So, uh, English is not your first language, so you may be required to uh, do some upgrading. However, most trades uh, will not require you to speak perfect English, <laughs> okay? You are all in the higher level classes, which means that you should have at least a benchmark five or up in order to understand what we're saying at the rate of speech that we speak, okay? Everybody understands what I'm saying? Yeah, you're a benchmark five or up, so you're fine. <laughs> you, you won't need to do any upgrading of your English skills, okay? Um, now, it says benchmark seven or eight recommended. It doesn't, it's only recommended, okay? It doesn't mean that you have to have 
a benchmark seven or eight. If your comprehension skills, your reading skills are, are good, uh, you will be fine. Okay. Now, uh, if you do not have uh, a school diploma or an equivalent, you can apply to the Access Trainee Program and they will train you, they will upgrade you in your skills uh, until you are ready to, to, uh, to, to work, okay? So they'll assess your prior learning and then if you need upgrading, they will send you to where you will get it, okay? Uh, and if you have worked in a trade, now I didn't ask this before, is there anybody here that's ever worked in a trade? Anyone? Nobody? Okay. So does anybody have a family member that's worked in a trade? Yes? Okay. Are they here in Canada? So some of them are, some of them aren't. Okay. So if they've ever worked in a trade in their own country and they want to get certified in their trade here, they can do the trades qualification exam. Okay. Instead of having to start right from square one, they can do an exam to determine whether they have enough skills to get certified here and if not then maybe they will have to do maybe one year of apprenticeship just to upgrade uh, their skills okay so that's the trades qualification exam so for those of you who are interested in uh, doing a trade you have to research the trades there are five steps to getting involved in the trades. You can't just go to Apprenticeship Manitoba, apply, and then all of a sudden you're an apprentice. It doesn't work like that. There are steps you need to take, okay? So the first one is to research the trades. Now for those of you who have a computer at home, you can go to the website manitoba.ca slash trade careers and you can download a PDF copy of this book so that you have it on your computer or your tablet or whatever, okay? As Melissa was saying, it has descriptions of all of the trades in there. So it will tell you how many years the apprenticeship is for a trade, okay? It will tell you what the average uh, apprentice wage is, the starting wage for a trade, for that trade. It will tell you what the average journey person makes in that trade. So your journey person is who again? The one who trains you. The trainer. Yeah, your, your trainer, the, the person who is already certified in the trade. So what did they make on average, okay? And then it will give you a short description of the trade so that you can kind of decide, well, is this the type of job that I'd like to do, okay? And if it is, on the bottom, before, before it goes on to the next trade, it gives you related organizations uh, that organizations that are related to that trade that you can contact. So you do your research, not just on Apprenticeship Manitoba website, but maybe Google the trade, okay? Uh, Google the trade in Manitoba, not just, you know, don't just put in plumber. Because <laughs> that's going to give you lots, millions of responses. <laughs> Okay, what you want is uh, plumbing in Winnipeg or plumbing in Manitoba, okay, and get some more information on what is involved in plumbing, okay. Once you've done your research, once you have determined that, yes, this is the trade that I would like to do, this is what I think that, you know, I, I would be suited to, then you go on to the next step, which is to know your requirements. We've just talked about your requirements, okay? We've said you need to have at least a grade 12 and you need to have math, science, computer skills, and English, okay? Step three. <laughs> Actually, just quickly, step two, I'll just show okay. you one more thing. Uh, so as we mentioned earlier about the math and the science and the English, uh, there is something in Manitoba which we call essential skills. Uh, you may hear about this um, as you're in classes in, in Manitoba. And essential skills are the skills which every workplace, not only trades, but every workplace needs 
uh, and you would need them to do a job well. So for example, things like numeracy, so knowing about numbers. Um, what's another one? Uh, computer use or like technology, how to use basic, basic computer skills. Um, some of these are uh, challenging for some newcomers because maybe you don't have experience in this in your home country or maybe it wasn't part of your education. So you can in fact upgrade for free uh, at many different locations around Winnipeg. One of them is called the West A West Drop-In Center. West. Uh, and also there are some other programs that will do it as well. When you go for your benchmark assessment or if you go to Manitoba Start, they can refer you to some of these places. Um, the other thing which we mentioned, if you have some experience in a trade, uh, or even if you just want to see what is your high school experience and your university college experience comparable to here, uh, they can help you at Apprenticeship Manitoba to assess your qualifications from your home country and see how equivalent they are here. So those are two other aspects of knowing requirements for certain types of trades. Um, the third step is probably the most difficult step, of course, because uh, not only for the trades, but for any job, you need to get hired <laughs> to be able to do the job. And I know that for newcomers, this can be the most challenging, is finding a job, finding an employer. Uh, however, we are going to tell you a little bit later uh, that with the trades, uh, sometimes it can be a little bit easier to find work because in fact, the employer is looking for uh, apprentices and they want to hire apprentices. So it's something that will be, um, I, I shouldn't say easy, it is, it is hard work, but it might be easier for you to find someone willing to train you, to take you on as an apprentice, because it's good for their business as well. And Liz will give you more information about that. So networking is very important, and I think you've learned that, all of you should have learned that here at Entry Program in your employment courses, but Manitoba Start can also help you with that. Um, for example, if you want to be a cook, cook or chef, that was one of the examples in the service trades. Uh, you can go to a restaurant, maybe your favorite restaurant, and ask to speak with the head cook or the head chef and ask them, can I be an apprentice with you? What are they going to say? Well, two options, yes or no. no. But if they say no, it's maybe because already they are training someone else. Maybe already they have an apprentice in their restaurant. Or maybe they just don't have the time. And they'll say, oh, come back in a month or two, and yes, we can hire you as an apprentice. If they say yes, then you can go through with step four and five, which we're going to get to. Uh, but again, like Liz mentioned earlier, you don't need any experience in the trades to be able to do the trades. I can quit my job today, and I can go to Canadian Tire, and I can say, I want to be a mechanic. But if I did, <laughs> I can go there and say, can I be an apprentice with you? Can I learn to be a mechanic with you? And they won't ask me, do you know anything about cars? Okay. They might ask me, why are you interested in mechanics? And I can give my reasons why. But they start from scratch. When you are at uh, the apprenticeship level, they start from the beginning. So they might take me into the shop and say, OK, Melissa, this is a car. <laughs> Okay, good, good, okay. Uh, this is the motor to the car. Huh, okay, okay, thank you. So they start right from the beginning. So for those of you that are thinking, uh, I can't do this because I don't know anything about it. Great, that's good because you don't have any preconceived notions. You're gonna learn with the job and you learn right from the beginning. So finding an employer, of course, is challenging, but it's something that uh, will help you, I think, in your future goals uh, if apprenticeship is something that you're looking for. So I won't go through all of these examples because I know that in your class uh, with your teacher and also at Manitoba Start they have lots of workshops which help you with the process of finding work. Uh, and like I said, just asking questions, networking, going out there, talking to employers, asking them if they're hiring apprentices, it's the best way. So step four is the registration process. And like Liz said, they're not going to turn you down. They're not going to say, no, we don't accept your application, because really the only requirements for the application are to make sure that you have found an employer, make sure that that is the trade you are interested in, and you fill out the form. It can be electronic as well or online, 
uh, and you have to prove that you are allowed to work uh, in Canada. So does everyone have their social insurance number? Yes. Yes. You're good. The application fee is $50. So you have to have $50. And that's it. Okay. And then step five, we don't have a slide, but if you remember from the previous slide, step five is start your career. Okay, so once you have gone through those steps, you will begin as an apprentice. Uh, Liz is going to talk about some of the benefits for an apprentice. And, oh, yeah, I think that's the end. Okay. So, uh, learn and earn. So, receive training and mentorship on the job. We've talked about this, okay? Uh, receive technical training in the classroom. We've talked about this. Minimize your student debt, okay? Now, I want to talk a little bit about why you would have any debt at all. Because I said that, you know, in school, college and university, you accumulate debt, but not in apprenticeship. Well, you shouldn't accumulate debt in apprenticeship, but there is something that you need to pay for, okay? So remember, I said 80% is on the job, 20% is in school, okay? So that school part, that two months of schooling, approximately two months of schooling that you will do, you need to pay for that, okay? Melissa said that apprenticeship was highly subsidized. What that means is that your schooling portion, Man Apprenticeship Manitoba is paying for most of it for you. The schooling is about $2,000 for the two months that you're there, you are actually going to pay about 200 of that 2,000, okay? Now, for the 10 months that you have been working, you've been getting paid, right? On the job. You start your two months in class, you're not gonna get paid. However, because you have been working for 10 months, how do you think that you get money while you're going to school? No. No. Oh, who said that? Employment insurance. Employment insurance. Yes. Has everybody heard of employment insurance? Well, you will, because you'll pay into it. <laughs> Okay, so while you're going to school, you can apply for employment insurance. Employment insurance will give you 60% of your wage while you're going to school. And then when you go back to work, employment insurance stops and you start earning your wage again. Okay, now I also said that you might have to go somewhere else to do your training. So what if you're doing your apprenticeship here in Winnipeg, but you have to go to Brandon to do your training. Well, there are all kinds of subsidies there as well. You can apply for <coughs> grants. Grants are things that you don't have to pay back, right? Uh, for childcare, for transportation allowance, for accommodation allowance, okay? If you decide to stay there for the full two months, uh, they, they will give you a, a subsidy or a, a, a grant for your accommodation allowance, okay? So there's all kinds of, of financial incentives here. Uh, it shouldn't cost you much. Not to mention some trades that you do, uh, like the, the power electrician for Manitoba Hydro, uh, any of the trades that uh, are with MPI. Does everybody remember, remember what MPI is? Manitoba Public Insurance. Manitoba Public Insurance, okay. So uh, motor vehicle repairer, uh, all those mechanic jobs. Uh, if you get hired with MPI, then they will pay this for you. If you get hired with uh, Manitoba Hydro, they pay this for you. So you don't have to pay anything. But if you, have, you do have to pay anything, it's that. And then you will also have to get like your, your tools and your, uh, your books for the two months as well. But your costs are minimal. Um, 
I think that takes care of that slide. Other than to say that you, you are going to be challenged every day because you're learning something new every day. And, and mastering a skill is really important because that's something that's going to stay with you for the rest of your life. Okay? So, as I was saying, tuition in books is here. This is the actual cost of the program. Okay, so you're not paying much at all. Now wages, sorry, we need to change this. It should be 1045, okay? Uh, the wages for an apprentice, well, it depends on the trade and it depends on uh, what, what percentage they have for each year, okay? So let me explain that. Um, let's say that the trade that you go into you are going to, it's a three-year program, okay? So I'm going to erase this. Do we have another marker? Yeah. Okay. Okay, it's a three-year program, okay? So you will do your 10 months and then two months. What's the 10 months? Working. Working on the job training. What's the two months? Studying. Studying. So that is the three years, okay? Now, in this first year, you're going to make the minimum wage plus, let's say for your trade, the trade that you've chosen, the first year as an apprentice, you will make 10.45 plus 20%. Okay, the next year, this plus 40%. The last year, it's this plus 60%. Okay, so what that means is that you're going to be making 10.45 plus what's 20% of 10.45? Two, 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 point, two, two point nine. Okay, two point nine. So two ninety. Uh, so you're making a little over thirteen dollars an hour in your first year. Okay. The next year of your apprenticeship, forty percent. The next year, sixty percent. Okay. So your wage goes up every year. Okay, and this is just an example. All the trades are different. Uh, what percentage they add on for each year, okay? So that gives you an idea of what your wages will be. And then once you get qualified, you start earning journey person wages, okay? Uh, the subsidies, okay. So let's talk about subsidies and awards and incentives. Uh, after your first year, when you complete your first year in apprenticeship, you can apply to the Government of Canada for a $1,000 subsidy, or award, actually. It's a grant. You don't have to pay it back. It's free money. Yay! Really, it's free money. Yay! <laughs> okay, so after your second year, again, you can apply for that $1,000 grant. Yay! <laughs> now, this is only a three-year apprenticeship. Let's, let's change it to a four-year, okay? After your third year, I'm sorry, there, there's no $1,000 grant. Darn, eh? But when you complete your apprenticeship, you apply for a $2,000 grant. Yay! <laughs> okay. Now, all of this is, is free money. Okay. All of this is free money. Uh, and at the end, you do your qualification and you start earning the journey person wages. Uh, what else did I want to say? Oh, yes. Everybody knows that we pay income tax here. Lots of income tax? Yes. yes. Okay. So as an apprentice, mm -hmm. you get to make a lot of different claims for different tax credits. Okay. 
There's the child care tax credit and the tools tax credit and also <coughs> tuition tax credit, okay? So remember I said that you were going to pay $200 for, for your tuition plus your books and tools, okay? So you get to claim that money. You get to claim 60% of that money as a tax credit, okay? Nice, eh? Not only that, you get to claim 60% of <coughs> this, what Apprenticeship Manitoba paid for you as a tax credit. Yay! <laughs> okay? Tax credits lower your income tax. Okay? It, it lowers your, your, your income so that you're, you don't get taxed as much. So these are very good things, okay? Uh, let's see, uh, the federal tax, I've got that. Basically, bottom line, it says bottom line, financial security. Getting into a trade, you are never going to be out of work. There is always going to be work for you, okay? Uh, and I've just kind of gone through that. Uh, there's other uh, things, remember I mentioned MPI? Okay, so MPI, for if you're working for MPI, they have a $2,000 completion grant, okay? Uh, also a $5,000 tool grant. Uh, there are other, uh, the, the grant for tool expenses, uh, it allows you $1,000. Uh, provincial assistance for tuition, child care, community allowance, we talked about that. Uh, and other awards, uh, there is uh, a downloadable pamphlet uh, on the Manitoba Apprenticeship uh, website that tells you about all the incentives and awards that you can apply for as an apprentice. Okay. Uh, I think that is the end of our presentation. Uh, thank you for listening to us. Uh, thank you for not booing. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so thank that's you. it. <laughs>